Are you considering buying your first telescope for astrophotography? Or maybe you're thinking about upgrading that uh, photo lens to a telescope. Maybe you're considering uh, expanding your collection with another telescope or you're simply curious to see what kind of things you should be on the lookout when you are buying a telescope. There are a lot of different varieties out there uh, and uh, with this video I hope that I can give you some understanding on uh, what things to be on the lookout for and uh, also give you some examples on what I would choose and uh, some mistakes that I've made along the way uh, while getting more and more experienced in this uh, awesome hobby. I've been doing astrophotography for about three years now uh, and I've surely made a lot of mistakes and errors along the way. But when I started out, I bought my first telescope. It was actually a kit from Celestrone. It was the AVX mount uh, paired up with a 6-inch schmidt cassegrain telescope with a focal length of 1500 millimeters. And that brings me to the first point I want to talk about today, and that's your expectations. When I got my first image that I was somewhat happy with, I was taking my mount and my telescope to a mountain hill not uh, far away from Oslo, Norway. Uh, and I entered the Orion Nebula in the hand controller and made it slew to the object. And I ended up with a picture like this. Can you imagine if I was uh, to compare this picture to something like the Karin Nebula uh, taken with the Hubble telescope? or just uh, this image of the Orion Nebula that I took with my Newtonian telescope. It's safe to say that uh, I would be uh, quite disappointed about what I could achieve with this setup and uh, also have a hard uphill battle uh, to do astrophotography another time, uh, simply because I would be disappointed and uh, sad about what I could uh, do with this thing. Another thing is that uh, these great images that you see online and are shared on social media, etc. Uh, is a teamwork effort. Not only is it dependable on the telescope you're using, but your mount, your tripod, your camera, your atmospheric conditions, your light pollution, where you live, all these things adds up in the end. Uh, giving some kind of uh, effect on what image you end up with uh, in the long run. Okay, so we're uh, at the computer and this takes me to uh, the step two of this video, uh, which is uh, what do you want to image? The reason I'm uh, sitting on my computer is because I want to show you a great web page where you can search up telescopes and equipment and see what kind of images are used with them. But knowing what you want to image or what kind of objects interest you the most uh, is a really nice way of narrowing down what kind of telescope you want to buy or what telescope you should buy, depending on your interest and what finds you the most fascinating uh, out there in space. And uh, the reason I'm saying this is because one telescope can't do everything. You can take a picture of Mars with a 250 millimeter refractor and you can take a picture of the Andromeda Galaxy with a 1500 millimeter uh, schmidt cassegrain telescope, but neither of those will represent the objects uh, in the best way. Uh, so uh, if we go on a site like astrobin.com, we can go and uh, check out the Explore tab on this page and you can search up equipment. This is a really nice feature where you can search up camera, can search up telescope, mounts, filters, uh, whatever. But in this case, I'm gonna search up telescope or lens. And uh, as I was talking about the 250 millimeter refractor, let's just search up the Red Cat, the Red Cat 51. Uh, so this is a very common used uh, refractor and it's a really great uh, start telescope, uh, even though it's quite expensive. You can see uh, a great feature here, most often used with. Here you can see what kind of uh, equipment people are using with this exactly telescope. So you can see that the uh, iOptron Skyguider Pro, a really nice uh, small mount 
uh, for travel and uh, the Skywatcher EQ6R, a really great mount. The ASI 294 color camera, the 533 color camera. So usually people are using uh, color cameras, not uh, monochrome cameras with this kind of wide field refractor. And we can uh, scroll down a bit on the page and you can see the different kind of objects people are using this telescope for. Here we got a great image of Andromeda galaxy. Uh, and here you can see with a 250 millimeter refractor that you get the whole galaxy uh, in your image frame. Uh, so yeah, you can check out the uh, play around with the search uh, bar here. Let's uh, write, uh, check out the Photon 8 inch telescope, the Newtonian that I'm using. It's an F4 Newtonian carbon tube. And we can see what kind of things people are imaging with it. Uh, this is the IC443, I think. The Jellyfish Nebula. Awesome, nice picture. And you can see the star spikes uh, that you get from a reflecting uh, telescope. So try and play around with uh, a website like this to get a bit uh, of a better understanding on what your telescope uh, can do and what kind of objects you can do with it. We can even Okay, so the third thing I want to talk about is uh, two words that will follow you all the way your astrophotography career uh, as long as you're using some kind of uh, telescope and that's focal length and focal ratio. Focal length is uh, simply described as uh, how narrow or wide your field of view will be. Uh, it's a number that uh, can vary from 250 millimeters up to 2,500 millimeters, even more or, and even less. Uh, but they will give you an idea of uh, how narrow or wide your field of view is. Focal ratio is a calculated number that you get when you divide your focal length with the diameter of your refractor or the diameter of your main mirror uh, if you have a reflector. When you hear people talk about how fast a telescope is, uh, this is usually referred to the focal ratio. Having a lower number means that your telescope is faster, it can gather more light in a shorter amount of time, uh, while a slower telescope will have a higher number, like F10, for example. To try and uh, get a bit uh, of a more understanding about this uh, subject, we can uh, think of uh, two identical telescopes with 1000 mm focal length, where one has a diameter of 100 mm and the other has a diameter of 200 mm. This will give you two telescopes with uh, 1000 mm focal length and an F ratio of 5 and 10. Now the F5 telescope will gather four times as much light as the F10 telescope if you do an exposure at the same uh, exposure length. Uh, so with this in mind, having a lower F number means that you can uh, do shorter exposure lengths while still getting all that precious light on your imaging sensor. This is important because uh, with shorter exposure lengths, it means that your mount and your guiding uh, are working under less stress than if you are imaging with a slower telescope. And when we're talking about focal length and focal ratio, uh, it's just natural that I will uh, tell you what I would recommend if you're going for a telescope, and that's a focal length of between 250 and 500 millimeters. So we are halfway through this uh, five points I wanted to talk about, and the next one is refractors or reflectors. Uh, simply put, uh, these are two of the main groups of telescopes out there. Uh, I made it uh, easy and broke it down to these two. There are a lot of varieties uh, within these. Uh, so let's start with the refractor. A refractor is made up with lenses put in a system 
usually two or more lenses. The telescopes used for astrophotography are often uh, referred to as triplets or quadruplets uh, and even higher numbers of lenses. This just means how many lenses the telescope is made up with. A doublet is a refractor made up with two lenses. The reason I'm saying this is because if you have a doublet, you will have some chromatic aberration in your system, uh, leaving you with uh, those color casts around the stars. This is simply put because uh, a lens is bending light wavelengths, uh, meaning that you don't have a focal plane uh, where every light is uh, fo in focus at the same time. But if you have a telescope with three lenses or more, this is usually taken care of with that extra element, uh, giving you a focal plane with uh, all the colors gathered at the same time or at the same point. A reflector is a telescope made up of mirrors. You will have a secondary mirror on top and a main mirror on the bottom. Uh, these reflect the light, so they don't bend any light in that way, uh, leaving you uh, without that chromatic aberration. But they have other issues that you need to be uh, aware of, and that's uh, one thing that your telescope will need to be collimated, meaning that your uh, mirrors have to be aligned properly so they don't uh, distort your stars when it's uh, projected on the imaging sensor. So again, I talked about the focal length I was uh, recommending between 250 and 500 millimeters. And when it comes to a reflector or a refractor, I would also recommend you go for a refractor. Simply because you don't have the issue of uh, collimating your telescopes, the mirror can be tilted in some ways, uh, leaving you with a lot of hassle to get uh, a really nice uh, imaging uh, field. Okay, so for the fifth and final step, I'm back at the computer and uh, we're gonna talk about the budget. Remember that the starting price of this hobby can be enormous if you want high-end gear but you will have a lot of joy and good experience if you start up with a small refractor and a simple star tracker like the Star Adventurer or the new Benro Polaris. But with that being said, yes, more money means better quality uh, of the equipment you are buying. And that is true in astrophotography as well. Let's show you three examples of a telescope in three different price ranges and we can go on to Astrobin and we can check out what kind of uh, images people are getting with those telescopes. So this is the Omegon AC90, nice and simple telescope. Uh, and if we go to Astrobin, we can see what kind of uh, images people are getting with it. So we can see a nice variety of uh, different objects, like the Jellyfish Nebula here. So let's uh, check out the mid-range telescope, the Skywatcher Evo Star 80. It has a nice uh, focal length of 600 millimeters, but if you pair it with a focal reducer and field flattener, you will get around 480 millimeters to 500 millimeters. And here you will see a lot of uh, mid-range uh, pricey items like the HEQ5 from Skywatcher, the 533 mo uh, color camera from uh, ASI. And you can see that you can produce some really great images with this as well. This is the Elephant Trunk Nebula. Uh, and let's show you the top of the price range, the Takahashi FSQ F5 quadruplet uh, refractor as well. Takahashi is a known uh, company, uh, known for making high-end and really superb quality optics. And we can see here is the Crescent Nebula and the soap bubble taken with the Takahashi. Uh, but if we go back, you can see what kind of uh, gear people are using it with. And here you will find all this uh, high-end uh, equipment like the ASI 6200 monochrome camera the astrophysics mounts. And with that being said, I think it's 
time to summarize some of the things we've been talking about. The first thing was your expectations. Keeping low expectation will only benefit you in the long run as you get more and more experienced. The second thing, what do you want to image? Try to get a good understanding and remember that there's really no telescope that can do everything. The third thing was focal length and focal ratio. So try to get an understanding on uh, these numbers. See what kind of uh, numbers your telescope that you want to buy is uh, having. The fourth thing was uh, refractors and reflectors. Get a good understanding on uh, what both of these telescopes work like. I would recommend a refractor at the beginning uh, and then you can move on uh, with a reflector uh, eventually. The fifth thing was uh, your budget. So don't go overboard uh, spending all your money on equipment uh, at the beginning. You will eventually uh, demand more and more of your equipment and what uh, they can produce. So I hope uh, this gives you a better understanding on uh, what to look for when you are deciding on what kind of telescope you are using. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. If you have any tips uh, that I haven't discussed in this video for the viewers, leave them in the comment section. So until then, clear skies and keep looking up in the night sky. Thanks for watching.